Hello everyone, I am Simone and welcome to my channel. Given the success of my video about the Dravidians, today I would like to talk about the last native Dravidian group of Pakistan and Afghanistan. I am talking about the Brahuis, a largely nomadic and semi-nomadic community counting about 3 million people. This group, for various reasons we will discover throughout the video, is very far from the other Dravidian people. Let's briefly recall that Although Dravidian people and communities are scattered all over South Asia, numerically are present almost exclusively in central southern India, with the major ones being the Tamils, representing also one of the oldest and more important civilizations in the world and present in the Indian states of Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry, Sri Lanka, Singapore, Malaysia, Mauritius, South Africa, ah, by the way, do not miss my video about Indian communities in Africa, and in many other countries in the world due to their immigration. Moving on, we have the Malayalis, which in India are present in Kerala, but consistent communities also live in the Arab Gulf region. The Talugus, located in the states of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, and the Kannada, or Kannadigas, mainly in the state of Karnataka. The Brahuis, on the other hand, are to be found thousands of kilometers away from the center of Dravidian culture. They are mostly located in Pakistan, specifically in Baluchistan, where there are more than two and a half million. A consistent community, however, counting about 200,000 people, also lives in Afghanistan, located in the southern region of Registan. An interesting fact is that a few thousand Brahui people also live as far as Iran, located in the southeastern Sistan and Baluchistan provinces, and even in Turkmenistan, located in the Merv Oasis area on the banks of the ancient Silk Road. Given their geographical location, they are almost entirely Sunni Muslims. But where do the Brahuis come from, and how did they end up in these remote areas of Asia? Historically, the first appearance of the Brahuis occurred in the 17th century, where Mughal reports about the Khanate of Kalat, a princely state existed in the Pakistani region of Baluchistan till 1955, mentioned the existence of this community or tribe. In fact, Brahuis inhabited one of the subdivisions of this Khanate, that of Jalavan. Unfortunately, before that date, Brahui history is almost totally lacking references. The few early Brahui traditions known are merely echoes of the Baluch traditional history. There is no evidence of any early association between Brahuis and Baluch before their encounter in the highlands of Kalat in the 13th century. Any assumption or speculation about Brahui history must therefore be based on linguistic evidences alone, namely the fact that Brahui is a Dravidian language. The most common and accepted theory is that the Brahuis took part in the original Dravidian migration towards the subcontinent coming from the northwest in the third millennium BC, and for some reason they remained isolated from the main Dravidian body in the areas of Sarawan and Jalavan, where they have lived since before the second millennium BC, without maintaining any contact with their Dravidian relatives. They would have then preserved their identity for millennia until the early 13th century AD where they had been overwhelmed by other populations during the Aryan invasion of the subcontinent and, over the centuries, numerically overwhelmed by the Iranian population of Baluchis. Nonetheless, the origin of the Brahuis is still debated and not yet confirmed, as is the theory of the Aryan invasion of the subcontinent, which still continues to be the subject of great debates both academically and popularly. The peculiarities of Brahuis are not only linguistic. Physically, the Brahuis are quite distinguishable from their Jat and Baluch neighbors. Another theory of the origins of the Brahuis is the one considering them relatively recent immigrants to their present homeland in Pakistan from the western part of the Deccan region in India. It perhaps occurred around the 7th century AD when nomadic groups associated by common interest and origin began to split off from their nearest Dravidian neighbors, such as Kuruk and Malto, and after migrating northwestwards across Gujarat, Katiawar and Sindh, eventually reached the Hyderabad area before the 10th century, where they had also converted to Islam. From here, they would have started trading north and south and much later into Afghanistan and Persia, having assimilated many other nomadic tribal groups on the way. Though its origin is still uncertain, Brahui is certainly not an old name, and is most unlikely to be a Dravidian word. From their encounter with the Jats, who had been present in Sindh since the 5th century AD, they would have taken their present name Brahui, that is probably a corruption of the word Ibrahim, which underscores also the Muslim character of the Brahuis compared to their Hindu Jat neighbors. 
Linguistically, the Brahui language has the peculiar aspect of being an isolated language if compared to the others surrounding it. Its being different from the languages spoken in the neighboring areas was first noticed by the British that, by the beginning of the 19th century, started expanding their influence over the subcontinent. In 1816, the Anglo-Irish colonial administrator Henry Pottinger, in his travels in Baluchistan and Sindh, was the first European to mention the uniqueness of this language compared to the others of the region. However, the world had to wait the year 1880 to get the first scientific treaty about this language, that of Grammatische Untersuchungen über die Sprache der Brahuis, written by the German professor Ernst Trump. And by the way, we don't know if he was a relative of the former US president Donald Trump. In his study of the Brahui language, Trump identified it as Dravidian. In the early 1900s, the English colonial administrator Sir Dennis Brace, who served in Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan, wrote the first grammar of the Brahui language. It is today classified under the North Dravidian subgroup, along with the languages such as Khuruk, spoken in Jharkhand and West Bengal, and Malto, spoken in Bihar and West Bengal. As said, Brahui's geographical distance from the other Dravidian languages, all of which, by the way, are spoken in eastern, central and southern India, has caused a total isolation that has resulted in a heavy borrowing from surrounding non-Dravidian languages. These include mostly Baluchi, but also Urdu, Pashto and Farsi. Moreover, and partially because it is not a written language, Brahui is being displaced by neighboring languages. As a result of this unique situation, not all the members of the Brahui people can also speak it, and many of its speakers are already bilingual. Basically, not all those who identify themselves as Brahuis are necessarily Brahui speakers. Brahui is also a term for a group of tribes. Some speak Brahui, some are bilingual in Brahui and Baluch, some are exclusively Baluch speakers. Ethnologue estimated the speakers to be more than 2.8 million, located mostly in Pakistan and followed by Afghanistan, Iran and Turkmenistan. In Pakistan, this language is not used for education and it was not used in the mass media until recent years when the first Brahui newspaper, called Haftai Talar, started being printed and distributed in 2004. Brahui is then essentially spoken language, and the literacy level among its speakers it is quite low. Nevertheless, a rudimentary literary tradition is there. The first written work in Brahui language was completed by the half of 18th century. It is called Tuhfat al-Ajaib, meaning the gift of wonders, and it is a poetic work of religious nature written by Malik Dad Gharsin Khalati. He was a poet in the court of Mir Muhammad Nasir Khan I Ahmad Zai, who ruled in the Khanate of Kalat from 1749 to 1795. In the late 19th century, a proper script based on the Persian Arabic system that was in use for other languages of the region was also created, or to better say, adapted for Brahui. However, despite all this, the struggle to maintain this language alive continued. Today, Brahui is listed by UNESCO as an endangered language, with the main issues being the poor literacy levels of its speakers and the lack of state support in the countries where it is spoken, especially Pakistan. Due to political and historical reason, the Pakistani authorities have given a primary status to Urdu, marginalizing the other native languages in the region even further. So, isolated, away from its close and distant linguistic and ethnic relatives, Brahuis has surprisingly survived and maintained their distinct culture for so many centuries. It would be a disaster if we let this trace of the Dravidian culture, perhaps a witness to the presence of these people at the outermost borders of the subcontinent and at the gate of Central Asia, to disappear in the sands of time.